Alfred Hitchcock is one of those filmmakers who has created some of the most influential and recognizable films of all time. There's The Innocent Man on the Run from secret organizations and crop dusters in North by Northwest, The Birds That Prey on People for No Reason in The Birds, and probably his most well-known piece of work would be Psycho thanks to the shower scene. But when it comes to Hitchcock as a filmmaker, there's one ability of his that in my opinion doesn't get that much attention. Within Hitchcock's filmography, there are three films that manage to tell masterful and suspenseful stories while not trying to rely on multiple locations. The first time he does this is with a film called Lifeboat. This film is set entirely on a lifeboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The tension is driven by the English and American survivors of an attack that results in the sinking of both their ship and a German U-boat. They soon realize that one of the survivors that they pull out of the water is a crewmate from that U-boat. We never should have let him stay on board. He'll eat our food, drink our water, and double cross his first chance he gets. What are you afraid of? He's one against seven. In an interview with French filmmaker Francois Truffaut, Hitchcock discussed his decision to focus less on suspense and more on a character-driven war story. It was really a microcosm of the war. No, c'était un microcosm de la guerre. The, 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 the democracies were all at sixes and sevens. Que les démocraties étaient toutes euh, hors des ordres, en tourbillon. And only the Germans knew where they were going. Et seulement les Allemands savaient où ils voulaient aller. A few years later, Hitchcock made the transition from black and white to technicolor with the film called Rope. This film is set in a single penthouse apartment and tells the story of two men who decide to commit the perfect murder by killing one of their former classmates and storing his body inside a wood chest while they host a party. Because it's based on a play by Patrick Hamilton, Hitchcock decided that he wanted to take advantage of the story's use of natural time by creating the illusion that everything was shot in one continuous take. You did the astounding thing of doing the movie in one in well, 20 minute take. Well, that was because it was a theater something. piece. Mm -hmm. and I was trying to get some movement yeah. into what is really a theater piece. Suspense builds as more of the guests begin to question the whereabouts of someone named David, the man inside the chest. It all comes crashing down for the two men when one of their guests, a professor played by James Stewart, grows suspicious of the men's behavior, leading to a climactic confrontation in the end. I asked you what is going on here. A party. Yes, but a rather peculiar party. What's it all about, Philip? What's what all about? Now stop playing crime and punishment, Rupert. If you want to know something, come out with it. Otherwise... Oh, no, temper, temper. It would take six years for Hitchcock to make a third film that takes place entirely in one location. But this next film would end up being one of his best. Rear Window once again stars James Stewart as an injured man who suspects that one of his neighbors has committed a murder. What's unique about this film is that Hitchcock takes full advantage of the Kuleshov effect in order to put the audience in the same place as its protagonist, L.B. Jeffries. We see the things that he sees throughout most of the film. It's best represented during the turning point of the movie. With this moment, we find ourselves wondering the same questions that Jeff thinks of. What was that noise? Which apartment did it come from? The protagonists in the audience share the same questions and theories as the story plays out. When Jeff becomes more curious about what might have happened beyond the windows, we grow curious too. It was Alfred Hitchcock himself who once said that suspense is far superior to mystery because it brings out a sense of emotion. Even in the limitations that he put himself in, Hitchcock still managed to express these emotions in these three films. The tension in Lifeboat brings out the survivor's anger and distaste towards someone that they have been told to view as the enemy. Rope brings out the feeling of fear when the murderers are getting closer and closer to getting caught. There's also a sense of fear towards the end of Rear Window when Jeff is caught by his neighbor, leading to a climactic confrontation. It just goes to show that even a master like Alfred Hitchcock can still find ways to keep the audience engaged with the story, even when there's a limit to what we see on the screen. <laughs>